Hey guys, it's Andy here, and just an update on what I've been working on in the past month. So this is JA, the uh, cell that I showed in my previous video with that uh, interesting anomaly where you short circuit it and it increases in current for, uh, I think it was like 18 minutes and then it would fall after 4 at its peak. Uh, this guy I haven't really done anything with, he's still doing pretty good um, per the second last video I made I think. Um, pretty surprising how long he's surviving. That's impressive. I think I, I think I got him up to 20 milliamps just by throwing a few drops of water in him just yesterday. Uh, but I don't really think that matters to be honest. I'm not really looking at him seriously. It's just a longevity test. So these guys here, they're copper cathode and uh, magnesium anode. But I also have a piece of nickel chromium and I coated the whole uh, copper pipe with graphite paint. So it's got like three different cathodes, uh, nickel chromium, graphite, and copper. And uh, they're, they're doing pretty good. Uh, one interesting thing is they turn blue instead of green and I'm certain that's because of the copper. Uh, it's just an interesting observation, but um, yeah, this one's got a fair bit, of, they both have a fair bit of corrosion, but they're both at 1.5 volts instead of 1.8, which would be the max that you could get with graphite and magnesium, as per the galvanic scale. But uh, yeah, they're, they're just interesting. I'm not really seriously monitoring them or anything, it's, it's just a pure... Um, longevity test again. Uh, these are using a uh, new formula that I made up. Three parts table salt, one part no salt, one part Epsom salts, and one part borax. And all of it is uh, grinded in a blender into a fine powder. Um, that's really important. Uh, if you take, say, the table salt and you don't grind it into a powder and leave it in its granular form, it will not crystallize properly so that's kind of interesting but uh, this formula is not really doing that great but uh, I think if I take out the Epsom salts it'll increase in performance the Ep Epsom salt seems to uh, retain too much water from the initial um, you know startup but anyway, so it was just a, see I got two different diameters, and that was just a test capacitance, and uh, I think I did see it, it's hard to tell, but mm, I think this one did have greater capacitance than this one, I haven't been doing too much testing, but uh, this one has higher current output as well, but uh, that's for another day to do that research. Um, currently I've been playing with... Uh, these two ideas. Initially I started with this guy, I was just using a cap and I was using a graphite paper. Well, this here is graphite paper and it's extremely brittle but uh, I thought I'd just test it out and it was a failure so graphite paper is not exactly a good idea so I don't know. Um, you can try it if you want but it doesn't work too good. With this cell, I'm trying to recreate an interesting anomaly uh, posted by the user 2910Quillen, and uh, the video is called Small Crystal Cell Abnormal Voltage, where he did something exactly like this, and he was getting 1.8 volts instead of uh, 1.4 or 1.5. Uh, so I've been trying to recreate that, and... Initially I thought it was just a use shape, but uh, I'm not getting anything similar to what he is, unfortunately. I'm still playing with it. Um, I just thought I'd make this video just to say what I'm up to. So I don't really have any numbers or any anything really about it. I'm just, you know, it's pretty simple plastic bottom to it. I just heated up the whole core and then I pushed it into a sheet of plastic to... Uh, get my bottom and uh, I'm using my own composition um, one thing that I don't have that he did was uh, 
alum powder. I don't have any alum powder in mind, so that might have to do with it as well. Or the fact that he just um, put the composition in and then shoved the magnesium into that, where I just have mine already in there and then I poured the, you know, uh, electrolytic in and then put water in, so. Um, there's a few more var variables to test, but, you know, just working away. Now this one, uh, this is John from Manahawken One's uh, little thing that he was selling on eBay. And uh, you can notice that it's uh, quite different from my uh, mailbox video. Uh, I by accident broke it because I was like playing with it way too much. Um, just testing different things. So I um, actually snapped these two things apart because I was being stupid. And I was just like curious as to how we uh, glued them together. Um, so anyways, I had to glue them back together. And then I also broke the other parts. <laughs> Um, I, I really, um, you know, I'm sorry to John, but anyways, uh, as a result though, I found a way of, um, making this thing a lot cheaper now. Before it had, uh, this piece of, uh, copper, um, just wire thing, and it would, uh, connect the two, and it was using, um, a whole bunch of, uh, these guys here. Now, what I did was I took one of them and I chopped it off, chopped off the uh, blue part, and then I just ran the uh, nickel chromium instead of just nickel, uh, which is far more flexible and has greater strength. And I just, you can pretty much see what I've done here. I just uh, chopped off a bit of the um, connector and then I just shoved both pieces in both ends and I crimped it and then it goes in and it coils and then the top ones all I did there was I just uh, coiled them and shoved them in and I don't even have a uh, one of these pieces so um, greatly reduced the cost and I can drill tiny little pinholes in there and then uh, run wires out of that the magnesium's really uh, brittle so it'd be nice if uh, I could get my hands on some magnesium aluminum alloy uh, ribbon wire because that would be much stronger and more resistant to corrosion which would uh, greatly solve that problem. Um, I'm using a different electrolytic than John so I'm not getting very good results at all. Without the alum powder um, we really take a current hit but we also have longevity increase by quite a large factor so uh, it's it's a work in progress, but I'm pretty happy about this thing. Um, it's 100% recyclable. Like I can take this thing apart a million times and put it back together, because uh, John gave me lots of uh, pieces of nickel chromium, and I've got and also of magnesium, and I had also bought a bunch of magnesium as well. Like, um, and it was relatively cheap. So really. Um, you know, just buy one and uh, this thing literally will last forever just for a few dollars that were spent. Um, which is pretty cool. I mean, it would be nice uh, if we could figure out how to reduce the cost even more. Um, but I think I'm, I did a pretty good job of reducing the cost. Uh, all you need really is a hot glue gun to build a new one and nickel chromium and magnesium and just one of these pieces. Um, which is good because uh, this little box of guys was uh, I think five bucks or six bucks so I wasn't too happy about that considering it was built in China for like less than a dollar so whatever markup price right um, but anyway so I just wanted to report on that and I'm pretty happy with it and I've got some other cells that I'm not really sure what to do with yet but you know just testing out everything and Lots and lots of testing, uh, a lot of failures lately, haven't had any real breakthroughs like I have in the past few months, but, you know, that's all part of research, right? You hit a few roadblocks and take a break, think about it, you know, go on vacation or whatever, and come back later and try again. Um, you know, it's, it's just a labor of love or something, I don't know what the term is for that. But anyways, uh, hope you liked the video, um, you know, like, subscribe, comment, what you think, um, you know, 
This has been uh, a little bit of a problem when I'm working on this, so if you have any suggestions as to how I can get it to 1.8 instead of it's at 1.5, you know, exploiting that anomaly, uh, let me know. Anyways, thanks. Bye.